Well, it's a controversial play with esteemed actors worldwide lining up to join the cast, including our very own Antonia Preble. Antonia, welcome to the show. Thank you. And of course, you are just everyone around here is so <laughs> excited to have you back because you did you start your career here at Avalon with what um, now? No, I'd done a bit of acting since I was 12 on, on TV, but uh, in 2002, I worked at Avalon for the year presenting WNTV. Yes, and there's lots of faces still here. So it's familiar, to see everyone. <laughs> a lot of these faces have been here, I think, for about 35 years. A lot Good of on them. them. Good, Good staying on power. Them. Now, the vagina monologues, a lot of people will hear that, you know, and of course it makes it people uncomfortable, but it's nothing to do with shows like The Puppetry of the Penis or any, or though there was the show about the big breasted woman that came oh, here as no, well. Oh, no, it's nothing graphic. And <laughs> it's actually, an, I've seen it in New York, and it's an incredibly moving really important piece of theatre. Tell me a bit about how it works and what audiences can expect. Uh, okay, well, it comprises about 12... Uh, 12 monologues, I think, that um, the author, Eve Ensler, she actually went and conducted interviews with over 200 women of all different ages, all different uh, nationalities, um, talking about their experiences mm. um, in that area. And, yeah. It, and, yeah, some of them are really painful and some of them are really funny and she found that even if the woman she interviewed found it quite difficult to talk about it at first by the end of the interview they actually felt a lot better by getting it off their chests because so often there is so much sort of embarrassment mm. or awkwardness or squeamishness um, when people you know disclose that information about themselves so she thought okay well this is wonderful that they feel better and she kind of wants to encourage the audience to have the same response it, it gets people talking about things that they wouldn't otherwise talk about yeah. and kind of i guess demystifies a lot of the um ideas we may have about that and so, so do you think because of that that it's actually not just relevant for women but also for men um yeah i think it's it is definitely geared at women um but i think I would encourage men to come and see it. I'm sure they'd learn a lot. <laughs> and, yeah. um, I mean, be good for them. <laughs> yeah, they would. And, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'd, yeah, I th I'd say it's definitely, definitely get it at, at women. But why not? I mean, yeah, men should come and see it. <laughs> now, so you've come off an incredibly successful television show series, and um, you're moving into the stage. What are the next plans for you personally as an actor? Um, well, I've just uh, I've spent a bit of time in Sydney this year and I've got an agent over there now, which is really great because I guess I'm just looking to broaden my horizons a little bit as an actress and now that I am available for other work because on Outrageous Fortune we were, you know, contracted so mm. heavily, um, which, was, which was great, but um, now I, I am really open to whatever's going to happen. So I don't have any firm plans to leave New Zealand straight away, but I would love to have the opportunity to work overseas at some stage so getting the agent in Australia is sort of the first step. Because Robin Malcolm also she came on the show um, last week oh, and she's right. doing a play as well and she's also doing that sort of Sydney hopping. Are you guys yeah. sort of colluding and, and trying to um, work together at all or help each other? Yeah unfortunately both times I was there she was actually in Auckland so okay. we just missed each other by a day or two um, but it's great knowing that she's over there and yeah have, there's actually quite a strong community of um, New Zealand actors in Sydney so it's I, I sort of just, just integrated into them while I was there. So have you done any auditions yet or have you, you've got an agent now? What, what did they yeah. say the opportunities are for well, you? Well, yeah, I've, I've done one. Um, I, I just sort of, this all happened quite recently, so I've done one since then. And, I mean, I'm pretty realistic about it. I don't expect to suddenly, you know, get cast in the next amazing thing tomorrow. But <laughs> um, I guess the idea is that I can audition for things from New Zealand and send it electronically, which is so great these days. Isn't it's, that you know, cool? The world just sort of shrinks. It's, yeah, wonderful. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I guess within the next year or two, I'd love to um, be working over there. But at the same time, it's a weird thing. You sort of have to surrender to the process but be sort of proactive at the same time so I'm not focused on one particular thing but just trying to be um, I guess yeah open to mm. what's happening and with, with the intention to move forward. Yeah. So what about Hollywood? What about the UK? Because you're, you know, you are, you know, the, the concept at least of the show has been sold overseas. Yeah. You would have a fantastic reel now, a show yeah. reel. So is that something that is a possibility? Are you talking to anyone over there? Um, not immediately. I, I did actually do a, a Europe and America trip a few years ago and met up with agents both um, in England and in LA and they were you know all really lovely but the the reality is that you really have to be over there in order to be noticed and get on people's radars and 
to be honest, at the moment, I really love New Zealand. Um, I feel like there's so many more opportunities for me here. Yeah. I haven't scratched the surface yeah. of what is available. So I really don't have itchy feet to go that far afield, which is not to say I might change that in the future. But at the moment, I'm, yeah, pretty happy to stay in this hemisphere. <laughs> and, of course, you're studying. So you're sort yeah. of, you're doing your English literature degree at Massey. How far through are you with that? Um, I think I've got about eight papers to go. So about so a year, about a full-time year. A full-time year, but I generally, I just take one paper a semester um, because it's just too difficult mm. with working. I just don't want to overload myself. Um, but yeah, I think I've got about one more English paper to do and then I've finished my major and then I've got to take a few, um, about seven elective papers. So with that degree, is that, are you sort of backing yourself up in case the acting thing doesn't, you know, um, continue or is that just more a personal interest? Personal interest, yeah. I, I mean, it's a BA in English, you know, that song from Avenue Q, what do you do with a BA in English? So mm. it's not really, um, I'm not, yeah, doing it with the intention to ever use it for something specific, but it's sort of just the value of being mm. educated is what I'm interested in. Let's yeah. go back to the vagina monologues because you've got, it's quite an interesting, that Sarah Wiseman is direct, uh, producing, producing and yeah. starring in, but you've got a huge cast of women. Who, who are some of the other actresses you're going to be performing with? Oh, well, there's 19 of them. Um, and my team, because there's, there's basically four teams of five actresses and right. then each night the, the teams rotate so you actually never know who you're going to see when you turn up on right. the night which is a nice sort of novel aspect. Um, so in my team it is Beth Allen, Jodie Rimmer, mm -hmm. me, oh gosh I'm drawing blank, Rachel House is directing and Gabrielle Henderson is that five? You, I think five? it is. You're amazing. I've got, yes, I've got a whole I know. Lot. Sorry, my, <laughs> There's yeah. a whole lot of others as well. Yeah. But, but Sarah was deliberately trying to give some actresses who might have just had babies yeah. an opportunity without having a huge run every night, every night, yeah. a chance to do it. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, I guess it's quite in keeping with the whole sort of value system of the show, which is celebrating being a woman. And yes. one of those aspects is... Um, of being a woman, the wonderful aspects is being able to be a mother. But on the downside of that, it does mean often women a actresses have to take a back seat in their career because you can't mm. be performing every night for three weeks. So this is a wonderful opportunity for um, new mothers or, or mothers with, you know, um, not just newborns, toddlers mm. or children, to be able to have a chance to get back on stage again and still feel like they're part of things without compromising their very important role as a mother. Wonderful stuff. Well, looks great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming down well, and, and talking to us. Me. Best yeah. of luck with this show and also with the rest of your career Thank internationally. You.